Hello everyone. In this video lecture, let us understand module 1 hierarchical modeling concepts. Let us understand the topics, parts of a simulation, the design block and the stimulus block. First, let us understand about components of a simulation. Now, once the design block is completed, it must be tested. The design block is the block in which we describe the functionality of the given design. This design block which is written is important to be tested for its functional correctness. So to test the design block, it is important we apply a set of inputs, that is we apply a set of stimulus and obtain the results. Such a block which applies the inputs or a stimulus is called as the stimulus block. The stimulus block can also be written in a Verilog hardware description language and the stimulus block is also called as the test bench. There are two types of stimulus application in Verilog. In the first type of applying stimulus, the stimulus block will instantiate the design block and it directly drives the signals in the design block. To understand this, observe. This is a stimulus block, a separate code is written. This stimulus block instantiates the design block. Here we consider the ripple carry counter as the design block. From the stimulus block to the design block, we pass the input signals. The stimulus is applied. The design block processes those set of inputs and provides the necessary output accordingly. In the second type of stimulus application, we, we have a top level dummy module which instantiates both the stimulus and the design blocks. The stimulus block can interact with the design block only through the interface which is provided. So this is a top level dummy module which has no interface with the external world. This top level dummy module instantiates both the stimulus block as well as the design block. So the stimulus block has its set of inputs to be applied to the design block so the clock and reset the top level module also instantiates the design block that is the ripple carry counter here we know that the signals of a ripple carry counter are clock reset and q now the stimulus block applies the set of inputs to the design block so it applies the clock signal it applies the reset signal the design block processes these data and provides the appropriate output from the design block to the stimulus block and we can verify the output of the system. So to understand what is a design block and a stimulus block, we take back the same example of a ripple carry counter. So first is the design block where we define the top level module and we call that as a ripple counter which instantiates four T flip flops. So we have understood how this code is written, how instantiation is done. This is a design block. This design block instantiates another sub block or a sub module here. So this is also a part of the design block, these set of lines. Then this D flip flop is instantiating another D flip flop. So that also comes as a part of the design block. So this is the design block which is the behavioral description of the D flip flop. We are not getting into the details of the constructs because each of these constructs will be understood in the further modules. So till here we have defined the ripple carry counter using three programs that is the design block. All the modules have been defined from the top level to the lowest level leaf sets. So now the design block is complete. Once the design block is complete, it is time now to test if the ripple carry counter program will work and give us the correct output. We should apply a stimulus block, write a stimulus program to check or verify the functionality of the ripple carry counter. So when we take back the ripple, the main program that is the clock reset and the counter, we randomly make the reset signal high to check if the output is made zero and then we make reset low to observe the counting sequence 
and since it is the negative edge triggered T flip flop, we can observe that the changes in the signal happen only during the negative edges of the clock. So every negative edges of the clock that we observe over here, we can notice that the input or the output value Q changes appropriately only at these points in the waveform. So the reset is made zero to observe the counting sequence. So we can observe that when the reset signal is zero, the counter counts in a normal sequence from zero, one, two, three, etc., up to 15 and then resets back to zero or rolls back to zero and then starts counting again. Again at a point when the reset signal is made high, we can observe that when the negative edge is encountered, the counter automatically resets back to zero and starts counting. So this is a idea of the expectation of the waveforms. This can be written in the form of a code using the stimulus block. So this represents the stimulus block or the stimulus program which creates the waveform which we discussed right now. So we can observe that the stimulus block has no input and output interface. It instantiates the design block in this step. That is it calls the design block and then it passes the input values from this block. The design block processes the input values and provides us back with the output values. So here if we observe, we are making the clock signal zero initially and then we are toggling the clock not clock is equal to not of clock every five time units so every five time units we are toggling the clock and then after the clock signal is set we are updating the reset signal we are initially making the reset signal high for 15 time units and after 15 time units that is hash 15 indicates after 15 time units the reset signal is made back zero and then it continues to be zero again till almost 195 time units because after 180 time units again we are making reset signal one and immediately after that after 10 time units we're making it zero so this timing instant of how we give the inputs is all under our control and we can make suitable changes as per our requirements we can monitor and display the different signals using the dollar monitor system task as well. All these constructs we will be understanding in the further modules. Once the stimulus block is completed, the simulation is performed to verify the functional correctness. So once the stimulus code is written and when we run that code, we can observe the set of outputs. So what happens at every timing instant, what is the counting value sequence, so we can observe the counter count still 15 and then it resets. This is a rollover which happens automatically. And again, it counts from 0, 1, 2. But after 2 again, at 195 instant, we have made a reset high over here. Because reset is made high, the counter resets back to 0 and starts counting again. So in this video lecture, we have understood about components of a simulation what is a design block and what is a stimulus block. Thank you.